Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Arsalan Farrow and I teach math and physics. In this particular video, I will be trying to explain to you how to get the harmonic form and how to use it in different situations. So first of all, um, you can have um, a particular trigonometric expression as a sum or difference of sine and cos ratios and while converting it into harmonic form, you're basically trying to bring it into only one trigonometric ratio. It could be only sine or it could be only cos. So um, how do we go about it? What is the idea behind it? So first of all, you need to understand that what we do is that we suppose another right angle triangle whose one perpendicular side is A and the other perpendicular side is B. And then we call its hypotenuse to be R and we call its angle to be alpha. So R can be determined in terms of A and B. Similarly, alpha can also be determined in terms of A and B. So we can find R by using Pythagoras theorem and we can find alpha by using the tan ratio. Now once we have found R in alpha, what we actually do is that we start with the original form first thing we do is that we multiply and divide it by the value of r. So the first term also gets divided by r and the second term also gets divided by r. So if you go back to your right angle triangle you would recognize a over r as cos alpha and b over r as sin alpha. So we can replace a over r as cos alpha and b over r as sin alpha. And then once you will write it down in this particular form, you will be able to compare it with the compound angle formula. Sine A cos B plus cos A sine B is equal to sine A plus B, theta plus alpha. So this is how you get the harmonic form of a particular expression. Now every time you wish to convert an expression into the harmonic form, you don't have to go through all of these steps. What you can do is that you can just in one step move from the sum of trigonometric ratio form to the harmonic form. How? Just find R by using A and B and applying Pythagoras theorem. Just find alpha by using tan ratio, tan inverse B upon A. Now, if the first trigonometric ratio is sine, you will express it in the form of sine. So it will be r sine theta plus minus alpha. But if the first trigonometric ratio is cos, then you will write it down in the form of cos. That's one thing. Now, now you have to remember that whenever you are converting it into the sine harmonic form, then the middle sign remains the same. That means if there's a plus here, then there will also be a plus here. And if there's a minus here, there's also going to be a minus over here. Now, you can remember it or you can identify it by using the compound angle formula, which is already given to you in the formula sheet, which says that sine A plus minus B is sine A cos B plus minus cos A sine B. But somehow it's telling you that you know that you're getting this harmonic form using compound angle formula and in compound angle formula for the sine ratio, the signs of the middle remain same. Whereas if you're expressing it into the cos ratio, just remember that you will find the um, R by using Pythagoras theorem. You'll find the alpha always by tan inverse B upon A. If first ratio is cos, you express it in cos. If first ratio is sine, you express it in sine. So R would be under root A square plus B square and alpha would be again found out by using tan inverse B upon A. But in case of expressing it in the cost ratio, you have to recognize that if there's a plus in the middle, it converts into minus. If there's a minus in the middle, that converts into plus. So if for, for converting into cos, the signs will change for converting into sine, the signs in the middle would not change. So 
if you can learn this particular form, you can always just in one step convert it into the harmonic form. Again, if you would want to recognize whether it's a plus sign or a minus sign, you can recall the formula of cos compound angle formula, which is cos A plus minus B is identical to cos A cos B minus plus sin A sin B. This formula is given to you in the formula sheet and this sort of highlights the fact that the middle signs are reversing. A plus will get you a minus and a minus will get you a plus. Hence, you can convert into harmonic form in one step. I've never seen examiner asking you to convert into a cos while giving the first expression as sign. So I've always seen this pattern that examiner if says that you have to convert uh, this expression into harmonic form, he specifies that you have to convert it into sign. Or if he gives an expression of cos with the first term, then it specifies that you have to convert it into cos as well. But it is not a big deal. I mean, if you supposedly, it, it, I, I, though I haven't seen that happening, but let's say the question is 2 cos theta plus 3 sin theta, but let's say you have to express it in terms of sin ratio, r sin theta plus minus alpha. So that's not a big deal. You can rearrange these terms and you can write it down as 3 sin theta plus 2 cos theta and then do the rest of the process. So as I said, first of all, examiner will give the first ratio as the ratio that you need to convert it into. But if ever examiner doesn't do that, then you can always rearrange this expression and rewrite it with whatever you have to express it in as your first term and then apply this concept of harmonic form. Now, why do we convert these uh, normal trigonometric ratio summation forms into harmonic forms? It has various applications um, and I will be getting into that. But first, first of all, let's have a look at the examples here. So it says express each of the following in the form r cos theta plus or minus alpha. So you know that you have to express it into cos ratio and the first term is given with cos. So you, the first thing you do is that you would identify the coefficient of cos to be 1 and coefficient of sine to be 1 as 1. And you will find r and you will find alpha. That's going to be tan inverse 1. So you've got an r and you've got in the alpha, then you can quickly just use the formula r cos theta plus or minus alpha. Now how do you decide this sign? Since you are expressing it in cos, then whatever is the original sign that gets reverted here. So that's why it's written down as a plus. Now if you look at this example, again you can find r by recognizing a as root 3, b as 1 and applying Pythagoras theorem to get r, tan ratio to get alpha and once you get r in alpha, you can rewrite it in one step in the harmonic form, r cos theta plus or minus alpha. But since the original sign was plus and we are expressing it in cos, so the middle sign converts into minus. Um, now, if you have, let's say, if this is the expression given to you and you have to express it in terms of sign. So when you have to express it in terms of sign, that's exactly what we would want to do. We'll still find r by using 5 and 12. And once we find out r, and we find out alpha as tan inverse b upon a. After getting r in alpha, we will be able to rewrite it into the harmonic form in one go. Uh, keeping one more thing in mind, since this sign is plus and we are expressing it in sine ratio, so the middle sign stays plus. The same thing is repeated with this one as well. You found r, you found alpha. Hence, after getting the value of r, and alpha, you would be able to rewrite into the harmonic form r sine theta minus alpha because the middle sign over here is minus, so this sign you would take over here as negative as one. Now, talking about the applications of it, like if I will, will talk about a particular situation where let's say I have 2 cos theta plus 1 and I have to find the maximum and minimum values of this particular expression, I can get that because I know that the cos theta value oscillates between plus one and minus one. So if I want the largest value this expression can take, then I take cos theta as one. And if I need the smallest value this expression can take, then I'll take cos theta as minus one. 
So that gives me the largest value of this particular expression and the smallest value of this particular expression as 3 and minus 1. So I, I mean, even if it had been like an only sign trigonometric ratio, I could do that. But if I am being asked to find out the maximum and minimum values of these expressions, I cannot determine that in the original form. I cannot determine that in the original form because when sign is minimum, cos is maximum, when cos is minimum, sign is maximum. So it's, it's, we cannot sort of identify together. So that is why the harmonic form proves to be very, very useful in this situation. Like for example, if I have converted into it into harmonic form, I can tell that this expression has the largest value as plus 13 because sine can take largest value as 1 and smallest value is minus 1. So the smallest value in the entire expression is going to be negative 13. Similarly, if you look at this example, the largest value of this expression is going to be under root 5 and the smallest value is going to be negative under root 5. So that's how you can find out the largest and the smallest values. Also keep an eye on an example where you let's say have a harmonic form in like let's say sine theta plus 36.5 plus 4 and you have to find the maximum and minimum value you would be able to do that just replace this whole thing by plus 1 and replace this whole thing by minus 1. But sometimes to um, sort of trick you in certain situations, examiner can give you an expression of this kind and could ask you to find out the largest and the smallest possible value. Still, you would do the same thing. You would put sine theta as 1, and once I put sine theta as 1, this is going to be 1 upon 2 plus 4. That is equal to 1 upon 6. And similarly, I can put sine theta plus 36.5 is minus 1 and I'll get this as 1 upon minus 2 plus 4 and that is going to give me as 1 over 2. So these values that I'm getting are the largest and the smallest possible value. So this over here is the largest value. You can easily compare and see which one is the biggest value and which one is the smallest value. So for these kind of expressions, if you have to determine the largest value of the expression or the smallest value of the expression, you can do it by this particular harmonic form. Now, one another application of this harmonic form could be to solve these kind of trigonometric equations. If you have an equation given like this, again, one of the requirements to be able to solve a trigonometric equation is to have one single trigonometric ratio. And since you have sine and cos both here, you would want to sort of replace that with one trigonometric ratio. And again, harmonic form proves out to be very, very useful in this case. So we can, we can find R, we can find alpha, we can get the harmonic form of it. Notice that since I'm converting into cos, I have shifted the sign. But once I have brought about its harmonic form, I will be able to solve this equation quite easily. I've just gotten the uh, range for the angle, I've gotten the basic angle, realizing the fact that this is in the first and fourth quadrant positive. So I wrote my answer for first quadrant and fourth quadrant and then solved it for x to get the possible values of x. Let's take a look at another example where I have to solve this particular equation. I found r, I found alpha, I wrote it down into the harmonic form, and then it comes down into a single trigonometric ratio, which you can easily solve for. And you can get the value of, uh, this gives you the interval of the x minus 57.99. You've got two answers for sine ratio, first and second quadrant because sine ratio is positive and then you can rearrange it to get the value of x. So guys, I hope it was helpful and you did understand the idea of harmonic form. If you have any suggestions, uh, please do uh, leave a comment. And if you did like the video, please do subscribe to my channel and give a thumbs up. I will put down the link in the description to download the notes, the um, work solutions and also the worksheet. Thank you. Thank you.